Once upon a time, if you were sick, the top doctors of the day would bleed you. Since then, we've learned that in general, if you're bleeding, it's a good idea to make it stop. And living through so much pandemic chaos, you gotta figure that the pro make them bleed camp went down kicking and screaming. Science denial has been around for as long as science. Lee McIntyre is the author of How to Talk to a Science Denier. And here's the thing, the bleeders didn't have today's secret weapon. The thing that's led to the great explosion of science denial has been the internet. Hey, the holiday season's coming up, which means awkward conversations with relatives you only see once a year, including those of the science schmience persuasion who evidently would rather put leeches on their neck than take an aspirin. I mean, who needs science? It's only gotten us this far, right? So we're running down how to talk to a science denier, and rule number one is to bite your lip and listen. Ask them, well, you know, what are your objections? And then let them talk. And in letting them talk, they'll finally probably say something that you can use. Let's not be cute. The context of this is the pandemic, but there are things you can try. And if you think COVID's a heavy lift. I've done this talking to flat earthers. Flat earthers. These are the people who watch Apollo 13 and say, ah, I call BS. Let them talk. They have a lot to say, but then they'll finally turn to me and say, well, what do you think? I think what you're saying is terrifying. And what I say to them was, you know, it sounds to me like your view is not based on faith. It's based on evidence. And they'd say, that's right. And I'd say, well, then tell me what evidence could convince you that you were wrong. That's probably more productive. They'll probably tell you what they need to hear in order to change their mind. You just have to listen quite closely. And if they tell you a certain piece of evidence would convince them, that's an opening. But don't count on that happening often. Instead, you've got to play the long game. If you go in with the idea that it's a failure if you don't convince the person on the spot, you're probably going to lose. Go in with the idea that you want to have a conversation with them, and then over time it might actually happen. Because you can't change somebody else's mind. But we can create a condition in which they can change their own mind, so plant the seed. But you have to be willing to come back. You can't just do a hit and run. And that's what's crucial. Denial isn't about facts. We've been approaching Approaching the vaccine crisis is one of doubt. It's really one of distrust. In this context, facts are counterproductive. Doubt can be overcome by evidence. Distrust cannot. And the only way you build trust is by being there in person, listening, and being patient and respectful with the other person. So practice deep empathy. Folks are not misinformed, they're disinformed. Somebody is feeding them bad information, so they are the victims of a propaganda campaign. This isn't the first time. This goes back to the tobacco industry when they wanted to fight the science through public relations. So remember that they're a victim and that by listening, a very important thing happens. The person feels heard. And when people feel heard, they begin to trust you. And for changing minds, earning trust is more important than reciting facts. How to talk to science deniers is at the top of the list.